All right, what makes a relation a function? So you've been talking about relations uh, throughout uh, math so far, particularly in junior high. And so we want to look at something more specific. What is a function? So remember, a relation is defined as a set of, we can show it in a variety of ways, but in this case, all cases, we can show it as a set of ordered pairs. We learned that relations can also be described with a table of values, an arrow diagram, a graph, and an equation. The domain of a relation is a set of all the, so the domain, remember, that was our, uh, we've talked about that already, it's all the first elements, okay? If it was x and y values, it's all the x values. So whatever comes first. In applications, it could be time or it could be um, distance or whatever. It just depends. Okay, the range is all of, is the set of all of the second elements of the ordered pairs. Some relations have a certain quality quality that also makes it a function. Examples of relations that are functions and relations that are not functions are shown below. Examine these to determine what you think the properties are that make it a function and not. So they, we kind of match them up in terms of the, the way that we're showing them. So the first two are sets of ordered pairs in both. So you'll notice in the first one we have for our x values, 3, 5, negative 4, 7, they're all different, as are the y values. Next one, 2, 3, 4 for the x values, the y values are all the same, but both of those are functions. So when we look over at the right, for those that are not functions, if we take a look, we've got 3, 5, negative 4, and 3. So we've got two 3s, all the y values are different. Uh, the next one, we've got 5, 5, 5. All the x values are the same. They're 5, and the y values are different. So that, as compared to the first set, when they were all different, um, tells us something about it. So for these values, for when x is 3, we have x, the y is 4 or y is 2, two different values. So let's keep that in our mind as we look at the arrow diagram. So over here we have in the first um, domain oval, um, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and arrows going from each of those numbers. In the right oval, second elements, we have just three numbers. So there's, there's two arrows going to the 10. That's a function. So that has to be okay that we have two arrows going to the 10. Let's take a look at the one on the right. In the first oval, 1, 2, 3, 4. In the second oval, 8, 10, 12. So same numbers. But in the first oval, we have two arrows coming from the number 1. Okay, which we didn't have two arrows coming from a domain before. We have two arrows ending at 8 and 10. The last one we had ending at 10. So this must play a part that we have two uh, arrows starting at 1. So that means when x is 1, y is 8. And when x is 1, y is also 10, if we were to show this, those as ordered pairs. So hopefully you're seeing a pattern. Let's look, take a look at the next. So our first column here are some numbers, and second column is the type of number. So this is actually, we're setting it up as a relation. So uh, when the a number is 5, it's natural. When the number is 3.6, it's rational. Negative 7 over 4 is rational. Okay, so we have two um, results that are rational. The different values to start. Here, irrational root 2, whole is 0, irrational is pi. So here we have two first values that are the same. Okay, so... Again, you're getting a pattern, hopefully. Graph of uh, discrete points here. So uh, negative 3, 2, negative 2, 0, negative 1, 1. Um, so they're all over the place. You can see that um, there are two points that have the same y value there and down here as well. Okay. 
So these two points and the ones at the bottom, uh, none of the x values are repeated. Okay, and that's a relation. Uh, that's a function. Over here, we have two y values the same, right? Um, and two y values the same here. These are different, but take a look. We also have two points with the same x value. Okay, and that is not a function. And then the last graph of the continuous, uh, we've got, so we've got a semicircle here. So for each x value, there's a different y value. And then here we have a circle. So all the way around. So for example, if we uh, choose the value 2 for x, we have a point at 4 and we have a point at negative 4. So really we have 2, 4 and 2, negative 4. So for all of these x values in between negative 2 and 6, there are two points uh, with the same x value, different y values. At 6, there's just one point, and at negative 2, there's just one point. Okay, so if you look over in the left column, hopefully if you can tell that for every x value that's on the graph or um, back in an ordered pair, like up here, there's only one y value. Okay, so that means there's no repeated x's. Here, for every x value, there could be more than one. For example, in question two, for when x equals 5, y could equal 2, or 3, or 4. And that is not a function. And the next one, when x is 1, y could be 8, or 10. Okay, so for a function, for every x, there has to be only one y value or specifically domain and range values. So if you take a look at the next part, examine the above relations that are functions and the relations that are not and determine what makes a relation a function. So a function is a relation where each element in the domain is associated with exactly one, oops, one element in the range, okay? Oftentimes, domain are x values, range are y values, but it really depends on the situation, okay? So that's why we said one, each element in the domain, so it could be any variable. Uh, then we're going to look at what we call a function machine. So a function is like a machine. For each particular input uh, that we put into the machine, it will only generate one output. So you can't put something in and get two different things out, okay? Um, that's, this is a basic, simple machine. What goes in, comes out, is one type of output, okay? So for example, if a function is represented by the equation y equals 5x plus 3, then the function machine would work as follows. So the machine is giving you your y value, you're putting in the 7. You may have talked about this in junior high. Um, in terms of equations, talking about a machine. So you put it in for 7, you can see it over here, it's substituted in, and then you evaluate that. And so what comes out is the 38. So for this function, x is the input and y is the output. The input is always the independent variable, okay, it's what you start with, and the output is always the dependent, because this depends on what you put in, right? 38 depends on what we put into our equation, okay? So often um, y is the dependent, right? Unless it has some different um, application, okay? And x is independent. All right, so here, how can we tell if a relation is a function? So, we want some fast ways, right? So if a relation is represented by a set of ordered pairs, then it is a function if something, elements of the ordered pairs are all something. So, we'll give you some hints here. So, if we're looking for um, all being something, let's take a look. So, our function here, 
Um, negative 2, 0, 3, and 7. So all the x values are different. There's some y values that are the same, but that's okay because the, it's the x values that we want to be different. Here, negative 2, 0, 3, 3. So here, x values of 3 have two different y values. So what do we want to be the same? Um, so we want here the first elements of the ordered pairs are all, in this case, different. In order to be a function, these were the same, it's not a function. These are different, it is a function. Okay, so that's an, a good way of looking at it. It isn't the proper definition. The definition is back here. Uh, where did we fill it in? Here, in the box. A function is a relation where each element in the domain is associated with exactly one element in the range. Um, we'll even, maybe, we would accept maybe an if, if we ask this on a test for every x value, there is only one y value. Uh, but this is actually the best definition because you, technically you don't know what x and y is. We may very, very likely ask that on a test. So be aware. Saying that the definition is that all the x values are different or first values are different um, is not a proper definition. It's a way of determining, but it doesn't give you the, the proper definition. So just be aware. We're going to use this, these, all these methods to quickly determine if it's a function or not, but that definition is in the box. So if a relation is represented by a table of values, then it is a function if the elements in the certain column are all different. So remember, back up to the previous one, the first elements had to be different. So here, it would be the first column. And let's check out. Apple, cherry, banana, all different. Doesn't matter that they're two reds. Here, red, red, yellow. It does matter, okay, that those are repeated because we're getting a different fruit for the same color. Next one, if a relation is represented by an arrow diagram, and it is a function if there's only one arrow for each element in the domain. Um, and so, which it kind of gives it away, the domain is the first oval, right? Okay, so we only want one arrow coming from each of these numbers. Okay, over here, this is going twice. Okay, so that is not a function. If a relation is represented by a graph, then it is a function if there is no point directly um, above or below. So remember, because for the same x value, if we take a look at this, this point here uh, just has one point. There's nothing directly above or below. Same with every point on that graph. Over here, if I chose x equals 0, actually that's not the point on my graph, here, that's a point on the graph, and that is. So for when x equals 0, I get two points. Um, so that is not a function. And those points are vertical to each other. So above or below. And a graph represents a function when no two points lie on the same vertical line. Above or below means you're looking on a vertical line. So if I drew a vertical line there, it touches twice. If I drew one here, it touches twice. If I draw, draw one there, it touches twice. If I draw one here, it just touches once, but you have to consider the whole diagram, okay? And so to summarize, the vertical line test is a quick way to see if a relation represented by a graph is a function or not. Vertical, here's technically what the vertical line test says. If any vertical line cannot intersect the graph of a relation more than once, then the relation is a function. So you basically want to, maybe I'll draw a line. For, pretend this is my, I'll do red here. Pretend this is a pencil, okay? If I can move, oh gosh, that's not what I wanted to do. Down. Um, here, if I move this anywhere on my graph, does it just cross uh, one point on that, that pencil, right? 
not twice or more than twice. If I bring that pencil over here, it just touches once, but then as I move, it touches twice for each vertical line. Okay, and it goes on forever. So that's not a function. Okay, so just be aware of, of that definition. Okay, and then the practice on the right says draw a circle around each of the relations that are also functions. Okay, so you want to look, remember, for a set of ordered pairs, um, all the x values in the first one, they're all different, so that's going to be a function. Okay, for every x, there's only one y. This one here, notice how there's three arrows starting from negative four. So that is not a function. Next one, if I get my um, vertical line out, okay, my pencil, and touches once, but here touches twice all the way along. So that is not a function. Next one, I'm going to move that. It's a graph. Let's see, it touches once there, once there, once there, once there, once there. So that is a function. For every x, there's only one y. Uh, here, for every x, 5, 0, 3, there's only one y. They're all different x values, so that's a function. Then, let's go over to this graph. This touches once, touches once, so on. But here, notice, it touches twice. This point here and this point here. So when x equals 3, y is negative 2, oops, and um, positive 3. Okay, so just be aware of that. That is not a function. Here, 3, 1, 3, so two x values with different y values, so that is not a function. If it was a repeated point, so say it was 3, 5, 3, 5, that's the same point, so that still is a function. Okay, so just be aware of that. Um, this table of values, Alice, John, Philip, so they're all different, so that's a function. Here, this arrow diagram, they all start one arrow from each of the numbers, so that's a function. Over on the graph here, take a look, it's very similar to the last one. One point, one point, one point, all the way to here. And, but that's an open circle. So an open circle means it doesn't include 3 there. So this point, uh, when x is 3, y is negative 2, and it's the only point when x is 3. So that is a function. So these are different, right? And then... Um, how about we do this graph, it's right underneath. So here, just touches once all the way, it just touches once. It may look like it's vertical here, but it's, um, it is a curve, it's like part of a circle. So it's getting close to vertical, but not quite. So that is a function, okay? Back to an equation, this one isn't linear. We did a linear equation before. But um, as long as you have y equals, then you're good, right? You can put different values of x in and you get y values, but there's no way you could uh, put um, the same value of x in, say x equals 1, and get out two different y values, right, based on this equation. So anything that's y equals, you're good. If it was y squared equals, then you're not good, okay? So just be aware. Um, next table of values, notice we have two balls, so that is not a function. Okay, and that's it, we're done.